Hey guys, Mr. Happy here, and today I want to go over the recently posted details on the upcoming hotfix for patch 2.05, the halfway mark between patch 2.0 and 2.1 that was released on the forums of Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn. Now, we didn't get the exact details of what they're doing, and they said that the exact details will be announced separately. However, they're giving us an overview of what we can expect. I'm going to do a video at a later date with the exact patch notes, letting you guys know what exactly has changed with all of these things, both from my experience and from the exact notes that they give us. So, let's look at the changes without further ado. So the first one, changes will be made to the way equipment is bound. And now, this one seems to be a no-brainer to me. Uh, a lot of Now, for those of you who don't know, this has to do with spirit binding. Now, spirit binding gear is where you attune it, and eventually when it hits 100% spirit bind value, you can turn it into materia. Now, I have whole videos about that if you're wondering about that, but the changes that I think will be made is that crafting and gathering gear can both be spirit bound in battle as opposed to only while crafting and only while gathering. So I think, very simply put, they're just going to make it so you can only spirit bind crafting gear while crafting and gathering gear while gathering, as well as battle gear by battling. You know, we have to go full circle with this one. I also think that they're going to make item level 70 gear, which is things such as the Griffin skin and the Vanya pieces. I think they're going to make them bind to the player as soon as they encounter a battle or as soon as they kill an enemy. Uh, the reason why I think that is just because... There's too much value in the piece of gear in order to make them, obtain them, beat up to Titan, and then sell them once you have all your Dark Light gear. I have a strong feeling that they're going to be doing that before Tuesday. So you may want to consider now what you're going to be doing with your Vanya gear and your Griffin skin gear and your heavy Dark Steel if you are holding on to it because it doesn't bind until you go into the binding coil of Bahamut. Those are the changes I think they're making to that, but we will see on Tuesday. Next, and this is a great one, introducing additional servers and enhancements to act as a countermeasure against the congestion to enter Amdapur Keep. Now, the reason why I like this one, nobody likes sitting in that reserving instance thing for 10, 20, 30 minutes and then just doing Amdapur Keep. Just queuing for 30 minutes, even with a full group of four, you already have the full group, but it needs to reserve the instance. It just takes forever. So I'm glad that they're implementing a countermeasure for this. Hopefully, it proves effective. That's all that matters. Until I see it work in action, I just hope that it proves effective. The next one, and this one has stirred up a lot of controversy, is actually the difficulty for level 50 dungeons will be adjusted. Now, people are going nuts with this one, uh, trying to figure out exactly what that could mean. Are they nerfing Amdapur Keep? Are they making certain enemies harder? Here's what I think. I think what that means is, now when they say adjusted, it could mean anything. It could mean they're, most of the time it means they're taking power out of one enemy and pushing it into another enemy. Uh, so usually it means some enemies will become weaker and some will become stronger. I think what they're doing is they're looking at Castrum Praetorium and uh, Wanderer's Palace and Amdapur Keep. I think they're going to slightly buff the difficulty of Castrum and Praetorium. And I, I don't quote me on this, but I think they're going to do that. And then they're also going to buff the difficulty slightly on trash mobs at Amdapur Keep and uh, the Wanderer's Palace. Wanderer's Palace especially, I think they're going to slightly buff. Uh, I don't take that for quote, but the reason why I think that is because they're definitely trying to draw attention from Castrum and Praetorium onto Amdapur Keep and Wanderer's Palace in terms of grinding philosophy points and grinding mythology points. So I think that that's the most likely scenario for this, that they are just going to increase the difficulty of most of the trash mobs inside the dungeons. I think they're going to leave, for the most part, the bosses alone. They're definitely trying to combat speedrunning here also, but we'll see exactly what they do. The next one is the number of, and this is another big one, the number of areas where you can acquire Algon Tombstones of Philosophy and Mythology will be increased, as well as the amount you can acquire. This has been extremely misread by a lot of people, and I've had a lot of people ask me about it since it was posted. So the number of areas when you can acquire Algon Tombstones of Philosophy and Mythology, I think they're basically going to increase... For example, uh, the hard mode uh, primals, I think they're going to increase the amount of philosophy and mythology you get from those fights. I think they are going to increase the amount of philosophy and mythology points you get from Wanderer's Palace to be more on par with Amdapur Keep. And that means I do think they are adding mythology points to Amdapur, to not to Amdapur Keep, but to Wanderer's Palace as well. They also might be adding philosophy and mythology points to places in the Binding Coil. I would hope they're adding mythology points to the trash mobs in... Uh, in turn three just so people have a reason of doing it for any reason at all although bayonne also specifically stated this week he even came to my live stream to tell me this that turn three is useless guys don't look for secrets anymore if you missed the forum post he said stop looking for secrets there's nothing there he crushed our dreams or he crushed our hopes and dreams but 
Bayon's the man, so I appreciate him for actually going out of his way and, t and answering the mystery of the Binding Coil 3. Thank you. Another thing I think that they're doing is the amount you can acquire. Now, that means that Amdapur Keep and Wanderer's Palace are most likely going to now give more than 80 philosophy points and 40 mythology points. So Amdapur Keep is going to, they're trying to really phase out Castrum and Praetorium with this one. I think they're going to make the trash mobs in Amdapur Keep and Wanderer's Palace give philosophy points, at the very least philosophy points, and maybe slightly increase how many mythology points you get. Maybe they're going to introduce mythology points to bosses one and two in both of those dungeons. That would make a lot of sense to me too. Who knows though, a lot of people seem to think that they're going to raise the mythology cap. That's not how I read this at all. I don't think they're going to increase the mythology cap at all. I don't think it's, I don't think they're ready for that yet. I don't think it's time to raise the cap on those yet. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the next one. Now this one is controversial big time. Implementation of a population cap for each field. This means that once a certain amount of people enter a zone, they will hit the population cap. And if anybody else tries to zone in, it will tell them, sorry, please try again. This was prevalent in Final Fantasy XI for zones with major events such as Besiege. And I'm sure that the main reason that they're implementing this is so that people uh, can't abuse Odin and, uh, and Behemoth to the point where there's so many people there trying to participate that nobody can see behemoth or odin it's not even really abusing it's more like being punished for showing up almost just because you can't see them so that's probably their first countermeasure against behemoth and odin i'm sure they're working on another countermeasure but that's currently what they have now it was probably the quickest thing they could implement while they work on a real fix again don't quote me on that one it's just the way that i'm reading these patch notes or these overview notes i guess you could say on patch 2.05 they already implemented this population cap on October 11th of 2013. So if you're experiencing it, check, uh, let me know in the comments below if you've had trouble zoning into areas with Behemoth and Odin. I would love to know uh, approximately what the population cap is looking like, at least for the time being. So the next one is adjustments to the spawn rate of monsters that drop Diarmite webs and additional locations where Caracol can be found. I see this more on the uh, non-legacy servers where Caracol Fleece is a massive market that, that it was opened up. I see so many people farming Caracol Fleece and asking me about Caracol Fleece. So I'm assuming that that is really the main drive behind it are the non-legacy servers. But there are very few places where Caracols can be fought and that their fleece can actually be obtained. As for the Diarmite webs, as far as I know, the only place to obtain those is in Total Rock or maybe potentially in some, uh, in some leaves or fates. But they are definitely doing that because Diarmite webs are an extremely low-level item to craft with, but they're so incredibly rare. The only item I'm surprised to not see on this list is Pudding Flesh because Pudding Flesh is still way rarer than both Diarmite webs and Caracal Fleece. So we'll see what happens. Uh, all we know is, is that there's going to be more Diarmite webs and more Caracal Fleece. So if you've been uh, using Total Rack for a market, you may want to start looking for other outlets. Next one. Now, this is a huge one, and I have not seen a single person complain about this, except for the people who already leveled their gathering jobs, such as myself, I complained since I just leveled Miner to 50 not too long ago. The amount of experience points that can be acquired on Botanist and Miner, as well as the experience points that can be acquired from their Fieldcraft leaves, will be increased. That just means you'll be able to level faster, basically. If you just want to grind out your gathering jobs and not use any leaves you can probably do that now however they're also going to make the leaves even more effective my guide for this is probably still going to stay pretty much the same since i i did do a, a botany and mining uh gathering guide not too long ago uh the only thing that's going to change is that the leave part is going to be way more important than the supply and provisioning part but the food is still going to be a big help and i'm really glad to see them making this change because fishing is way faster than botany and mining currently but it has much less value so a lot of people don't do it, but the level of speed that you can level it is amazing. So glad to see that they're making these changes to botany and mining. And the final thing that they said is user interface elements related to materia and target information will be adjusted. They are probably doing this um, somewhat to help the uh, the PlayStation 3 players as well as the PC players to a degree. People who have trouble with the targeting, it sounds like they're going to be doing that as well as elements related to materia. They're probably going to impl they're probably going to increase the uh, readability of the uh, material user interface. I don't really have an exact idea of what they're doing here. Hopefully they're just making things a little bit easier on both the PS3 and the PC players when it comes to having somebody meld your materia and when it comes to looking at the materia stat caps i'm sure that's a big thing is is showing people the stat caps in a much more readily available way but we'll see what happens in addition to the above adjustments will be a number of bug fixes i have a ton of theories on some of the bugs they might be fixing but if you want to get a rough idea 
head to the bug forums currently accepted working on all of them just make sure to read through all of those possible things on the final fantasy 14 forums if you want some idea of some of the changes they might be making in terms of bug fixes Additionally, some things that weren't listed in this post but will also be happening on October 15th. You will, uh, the All Saints Wake, which is the Halloween event for Final Fantasy XIV, will be beginning. We don't have the exact details on it yet. However, you will be able to obtain cool things such as a ghost costume or a pumpkin head outfit. So hopefully you guys are excited for that. I don't know what kind of other details they're going to have such as how to obtain these items. But I have a strong feeling we're going to see more fates involving Halloween. Also, on October 15th, the World Transfer Service is finally going live. That's right. World Transfers, you guys have been asking about them for so long now. They are finally happening. They are going to happen on October 15th. And they will be free for seven days. That's right. Seven days of free server transfers. So, hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. Keep in mind, you can only transfer if your free trial is over. So, if it's not, I'm, uh, unfortunately, it won't be free if it's not free if it's not done uh, before those seven days are over. But for those of you who made characters back in September, back in early or back in late August, and you've been waiting to transfer your characters onto another server, that opportunity is now yours. But anyway, guys, tell me what you think about some of these things. Obviously, we don't have exact details yet. But I want to hear what you guys think is going to happen, what some of these changes are going to implement. Are you a fan of the population cap? Do you think the level 50 dungeons are going to get nerfed? Do you think that mythology tombstones are going to drop from turn 3? Do you think that mythology tombstones are going to drop from Wanderer's Palace? Do you think trash is going to start dropping philosophy tombstones? Let me know what you guys think all these patch notes mean in the comments below, and I will come out with a later video discussing what the actual changes were. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favorite, subscribe, and share for more Final Fantasy XIV updates. I would like to start doing a weekly dev post update. I think that would be really, really awesome to keep people up to date on what the developers are talking about with the players. So hopefully if you guys are a fan of that idea, I will definitely go through with that. Just let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter and give me your thoughts as well. Also, if you have any discussion when it comes to theory crafting or any ideas, if you need some help or advice with anything, be sure to hit me up on Facebook or Twitter. I love helping out my viewers and my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. You have no idea how much it means to me that you support my channel. Also, feel free to follow me on Twitch. I actually have a new streaming schedule. Sundays and Wednesdays from noon to 5.30 p.m. EST is the rough estimate of when I stream. I do like to stream on off hours as well on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, but not every single day. Sundays and Wednesdays are the only guaranteed days where I'm definitely streaming. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoy these upcoming hotfixes, and uh, until next time, take care.